It started in 1926 when we had a president who was also the basketball coach, he was also the baseball coach, he was also a classroom teacher. The first band director was Ralph Waldo Emerson Jones. He wanted a band, and so he formed the band. We got 17 instruments from Seals and Roebuck. The word is, we got house, we got house. It goes beyond the playing of music. It goes beyond the formations. It gets into the expressiveness of the individual and the heart and soul of the individual. Music has been a big part of black folks, African Americans. Halftime gives us an opportunity to express that. Halftime gives us an opportunity to, to embrace differences, to celebrate differences. Many people, my mother even, came to the the football games that I played in, sometimes she didn't know my number, but she knew my sister was playing in the band. We like dancing, we like music as a people, and, it, and it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a tremendous undertaking, it's tremendous performance, and uh, it's a happening. As magnificent and seamless as the band's performances appear, the show preparation takes enormous dedication and sacrifice from band members. If you look in the dictionary, you'll always find hard work coming before success. And uh, it's no different today than it was when I was a student here. We practiced for many hours. Early in the morning, we'd be out practicing late in the evening. We used to get up one, two, 3 a.m. in the morning and go outside and rehearse. One, two, ready, and. The students make it special because they work so hard and they put their heart into the band. And they practice, they practice till it's perfect. The world-famed band's demanding standards of performance have taken them across the country and around the globe. From the 1964 AFL Championship in San Diego, to the first Super Bowl in LA, to presidential inaugurations in Washington, and across the oceans to Japan and Africa, the band has played for presidents, emperors, cowboy fans, and music lovers alike. Touring the world, the band's musical roots remain at home in the Louisiana soil and the legendary New Orleans music scene. If you're a Louisiana person and you're born with an instrument in your hand, you're going to be Dixieland influenced. We get our, a lot of our influence on New Orleans music, a lot of our sway, our swagger. It all comes from New Orleans music. That New Orleans music have that uh, jump, that feel. And we actually play New Orleans music, so that gives us our little energy, our little pep. After Hurricane Katrina's surging waters devastated New Orleans, the band took on a new focus, a fundraising tour for Louisiana's victims. A lot of people in the band are from New Orleans, and they lost their house. Some of them lost family members. We had to keep our band together and pull together so we can uh, make a, a positive show. So the ground band is on a mission. And when we got to Seattle, we made three performances in every stadium that we packed. All the money went through victims in the name of Ground State University marching band. I saw people crying as we played, and it was just a lot of love and emotion. So basically, we turned something that was negative into a positive situation. We try to make the band do this whole formation in Superdome. We're standing on other people's shoulders, the past, our history. And so if we know our history, we know we have to keep the legacy going. Go and do something where a person will send you an email or just break into tears and say, you motivated me so much by your performance that I'm proud to be an American. I'm a proud to be a black man. I want to be a member of your program because of what you are instilling in your students. 